Assalamu alaikum. My question is kind of related to the one uh, the sister started asking and the, the other one who uh, commented on uh, picking good things in religions. See, uh, I believe, I believe uh, Islam is part of this continuous chain of religions, like if we're talking about Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. In order to be a Muslim, you have to believe first in Judaism and Christianity. My question is, like the Samaritans and the crucifixion of the Christ, like, uh, I mean, let me say the, the Islamic story about the crucifixion of the Christ, in other words. And uh, I believe that it's, you know, w once this issue is uh, clarified, we'll have no more major differences, like gaps will just turn off. The brother has a question. He has posed two parts of the question. That a Muslim can only be a Muslim first if he believes in Judaism and Christianity and then Islam, which I disagree, brother. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number three, verse number 19, in the din in the law Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah is Islam. So what Moses, peace be upon him, preached was nothing but Islam. He never preached Judaism. What Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, preached was nothing but Islam. He never preached Christianity. The word Christianity doesn't exist in the Bible. Do you know that? The word Christianity doesn't exist in the Bible. The first time the word Christian is used in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts it says that the people of Antioch, they called the followers of Jesus Christ as Christians. It was a nickname given by the people of Antioch. Jesus Christ, peace be upon never heard the word Christian in his life. Do you know that? So where did he teach Christianity? So for you to say a Muslim should first follow Judaism, Christianity, then Islam is totally wrong. In Nadina, in the law of Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah is Islam. What all the messengers preached is nothing but Islam. These, what you find, the Bible and the other books, they are the corrupted form of the original revelations. Now coming to your question, that what is the Islamic version of crucifixion? What is Islam actually about crucifixion? Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse 157, that they said and boast that we killed Jesus, the son of Mary, the Jews, they said and boast, we killed Jesus, son of Mary. They killed him not, neither did they crucify him. Well, I can should be alone. It was only made to appear so. And all those who differ are full of doubts. With only conjecture to follow. For a surety, they killed him not. So according to the Quran, the Jews said and boast that we killed Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. But they killed him not, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. And all those who differ are full of doubts, with only conjectures to follow. For assuredly they killed him not. So according to the Quran, we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not crucified. It was only made to appear so. And I've had a debate on was Christ really crucified. Crucifixion means a person should die on the cross. And in my debate, I've proved that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he did not die on the cross. So we don't have an English term for a person who's put on the cross, but does not die. So the new word that we can coin is crucifixion. F-I-C-T-I-O-N, fiction, not fiction, not F-I-X-I-O-N. So what we believe, that it was a crucifixion. C-R-U-C-I-F-I-C-T-I-O-N, but it was not crucifixion, F-I-X-I-O-N. Because I proved in my talk that he did not die on the cross. To cut it short, to make the Christian realize, in one nutshell, how to prove that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not die on the cross. He was not crucified. When Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was asked by the people that, oh, master, show us some signs. So he replies in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38, he says, you evil and adulterous generation, you ask me for a sign. No sign shall be given except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights, in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, anyone who's a Christian, he knows the sign of Jonah, he has to go to the book of Jonah. It is only one page, only two sides. And when you ask any Christian about the sign of Jonah, they will tell us that Jonah was asked by Almighty God to go to Nineveh to deliver the message, but he runs away from the commandment and goes to Joppa. So here, while he's traveling in the ship, there's a storm. So it was a thinking at that time 
that the storm is due to a person has not obeyed to the commandment of his Lord. So they draw lots. So Jonah peeps be upon him. He volunteers and says, I have run away from the commandment. At that time, it was a thinking that if they throw the person overboard in the sea, the sea would become calm. So they take Jonah and they throw him overboard. Now when they throw Jonah overboard, was he dead or alive? Was he dead or alive? He was alive. When he goes in the sea, normally in a raging sea, in a storm, a human being ought to die. But Jonah does not die. Peace be upon him. He's alive. A fish comes and gobbles him up. When the fish gobbles him up, was Jonah dead or alive? He was alive. If he dies, it's not a miracle. He's alive, it's a miracle. Three days and three nights, the fish takes him around the ocean. The man ought to die because of suffocation. He does not die, it's a miracle. The fish vomits him out on the shore. He ought to die, he does not die. It's a miracle of a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. He's thrown overboard, he does not die. A fish comes and gobbles him up, he does not die. Three days and three nights, he roams in the belly of the fish, he does not die. He's vomited out, he does not die. A miracle of a miracle of a miracle. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now when you ask a Christian, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the sepulcher, in his grave, for three days and three nights, was he dead or alive? Was he dead or alive? The Christian tell us he was dead. But then there's a contradiction. For him to fulfill the prophecy of the sign of Jonah, he has to be alive. So only on this one prophecy, there are various ways I can prove he wasn't crucified. It proves that Jesus Christ, peace be upon, did not die on the cross. He was alive. So based on this, we can prove from the Bible that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he did not die on the cross. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, puts all his eggs in one basket. He says, no sign shall be given except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And further, if you analyze, even three days and three nights, it is not fulfilled. Because on Friday, he's put on the cross. So before Saturday comes, he's put down. He's in the grave. When? When he's put in the grave. He's put on Friday night. He's there on Saturday full day, Saturday night, Sunday morning is out. So it's two nights and one day. So even the prophecy of three days and three nights is not fulfilled. But surely if he has to fulfill the other way, like Jonah, he has to be alive. And I've given various arguments from the Bible and proofs that Jesus Christ, peace be, was not crucified. You can take my videotape. I had a debate with an Arab Christian, an Iraqi Christian. Was Christ really crucified? And I proved there that he was not crucified, he was raised up alive. Hope that answers the question.